first, thanks for welcoming us into your home. It's a beautiful home, man. You're so and welcome. It's a, We're glad it's a to have you here. Beautiful project, also. Uh, I guess my first question is, uh, and I don't know if, if anybody asked you this, but how did you go about casting for Jesus? Did you ask him to change water into wine, or I mean, like, <laughs> what was the the process of finding the perfect person to play? Jesus in this. We were only about a, a, a month or six weeks away from beginning filming and we did not have anyone yet cast to play Jesus and to say that we were a little bit anxious about that would be an understatement. We knew that the casting of this role was the singular most important piece of casting for the entire series mm. and you know we really we were looking everywhere, but I, I believe the reason that we ended up finding Diogo Morgado, who is the beautiful Portuguese actor mm -hmm. who ended up in the part, is because we prayed for him. Mm -hmm. We put it out there in prayer circles and we asked everyone we knew and through our church to just start putting it out there. We were looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's what the actual email of Roma sent out, actually, that, 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 that was re looking for Jesus, <laughs> and it was amazing. Everybody, you know, Bishop Jakes at his church, Charles Jenkins, Joel Austin, Rick Warren, you know, Sam Rodriguez, friends all over the country praying. And prayer works because miraculously, you know, through a series of things that could never have happened. Co he, he came coincidental walking. things, you know. On Touch by an Angel, we used to say that coincidence was God's way of remaining anonymous. Mm. And there were some amazing coincidences yes. that brought Diogo into mm. our lives. He actually ended up coming to this house for our very first meeting yes. mm. with him. And we knew instantly, before we spoke to him, we looked out our, our front door and we saw him approaching, walking down our garden path. And I turned to Mark and said, there he is there's the actor that's going to play Jesus wow. and it was him and he has given the most beautiful performance that will touch people's lives all over the world. I guess the other question is why? Why this project? I mean, you, you both have been wildly successful in your careers, and uh, what would make you undertake this challenge to, to put the Bible into this miniseries? Well, you know, for us, we're people of faith. Now, we believe Jesus is the Son of God. We believe in the Bible. And therefore, when we hear a little voice inside us telling us to do something, we know that's a calling from God. Other people could hear it as instincts if you're not a person of faith. But the most important thing is to act upon those callings. And we knew from when we committed to each other in 2009 to work on this and make this happen, we've never ever looked back. Yeah. Also, you know, individual stories from our Bible have been turned into movies, in some cases very successfully, but no one has tackled the Bible as a series, mm. as a meta-narrative. And our commitment was to tell the story from the beginning to the end, to begin at Genesis and to end at Revelation. Now, clearly, we only had 10 hours. Right. So we, we had to conflate the stories. We had to lose some stories. But, but we, we, it's more of a wonderful, beautiful introduction to the Bible. But we know we, this is a video generation. So the opportunity here to reach many people, particularly young people, we're the parents of teenagers. And we see this as a chance to speak to kids, maybe who've never read the Bible, 
who have never been to church, but who will get to turn the TV on. And um, it's been just such a marvellous journey, humbling for us, exciting for us, and to get to produce this together as a married couple after four years to still be speaking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the real miracle. <laughs> How do you measure the success of this? I mean, I, I know with The Voice and all the other TV shows, you have ratings and everything else, but at the end of the day, how do you measure how successful this miniseries was as to what your goals were going in? You know? Well, the, the real success to us, I mean, we, we make a lot of shows, as you mentioned. I mean, between Roma's been for 10 years in Touched by an Angel as the star, and we have The Voice, Survivor, Shark Tank, uh, The Apprentice, and various award shows. We judge success is whether we like it or not. That's what really matters to us. And in terms of this project, we don't just like it, we love it. We love this Bible series. And I feel like more than a billion people will see this over the next 25, 35 years. That's, that'll be yeah. more than seen all the other series it's combined. It's going to go all over the globe, you know? And it's, and, it, and it's going to reach people in places we've never been mm. and people whose stories we will never know. But it will be touching people's lives and bringing the gospel alive for them. And, you know, we made this because we wanted to create a project that glorified God. And our God is great. And, um, we, mm -hmm. you know, we found wonderful people to work on this. Great special effects, great music, a wonderful, international, diverse cast. Yeah. All these people coming together to, to create this really beautiful, story for this generation. And um, we know from the screenings we've already had that, that you know, it's going to appeal to grandparents and grandkids. There's something here for everybody. Wow. And um, it's really, um, we're on the home stretch. Wow. You know, it's been a long, a long, loving journey. And we finally get to, to bring it home. It'll be on history, Sunday the 3rd of March at 8 p.m. for five weeks with the five finale Sundays. on Easter Sunday. Wow. And that Easter Sunday episode has the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, um, Pentecost, the conversion of Paul in through Revelations, epic stuff. Wow. Yeah, and a moment we had recently, we were in, we've been to many cities. I mean, we feel a little bit like Paul in some ways. You know, we've gone a city a week, churches in every city. Two weeks ago, a week ago, we were in uh, Jersey City. It was a predominantly Hispanic and African-American church community. And we screened, and we even screened part of the crucifixion, which we haven't shown many times. And an African-American man stood up with tears on his face. He said, thank you for making an ebony-skinned man as Simon the Cyrene to carry the cross. It's important. Wow. Really important. Well, I congratulate you guys and salute you guys for walking out in the spirit and doing this. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more exclusive coverage of our latest news and entertainment, be sure to subscribe to our Black Tree TV channel and don't forget to click on either arrow on either side to watch one of our most commented videos. What are the, your friends and family, how have they reacted to you becoming, you know, this, this star? You, have you seen your friends treat you differently or your family treat you any differently? Um, I haven't seen them since, like, the nomination, but um, before then they would just be like, oh, you came back, huh? came back you left me huh didn't bring me so it's just like it's like that